They play defense at Ole Miss, or so we're hearing. We'll have to uh, see it to believe it, I guess. Talking Ole Miss football with the spring game on tap for Saturday with Jake Evans from the Rebel Walk. So head on over there for the latest on Ole Miss athletics. Jake, how are we doing today? We're good, Mark. We're good. We're uh, we're excited to see you know all of spring practice and this and this new team uh, you know kind of culminating into the Grove Bowl tomorrow. Um, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it's it's always fun because you get to see uh, you know you get to see your team succeed. But at the same time, if you're doing well, that means the other side of the ball is not doing very well. Um, so you know, we're we're, we're excited to see it. Uh, we're we're going to get a good look at what we're expecting this year. Um, you know, obviously hopes are high, and and there's a lot of excitement and energy in Mississippi this year. Um, so yeah, we're excited. We're uh, we're we're ready to get it going tomorrow. I think most people just like to see offense. So so they they make a lot out of wow, that was a great uh, 40-yard completion from our quarterback to our wide receiver. But then, as you say, on the flip side, you have to think, um, okay, does that mean that um, our coverage skills aren't too good? Uh, so, again, they're playing against each other. You make it uh, out of it uh, what you will. But um, So we've had a number of scrimmages in the books before we uh, have the Rebels get back on the field for the last time uh, on Saturday. So I let off with a statement about defense, but you're telling me that they're actually um, – playing some defense for the rebels. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, through the, through the first two scrimmages, um, only one touchdown allowed by that, uh, by, by that starting unit. Um, and, and, you know, obviously that's exciting. Um, there's a lot of returning depth and a lot of, you know, incoming talent, um, that, is, is, you know, like I said, very exciting for us. Um, but, you know, on the flip side of it, they're going against a, a, a kind of a shell of the offense that we, you know, saw last year. Uh, Matt Corral doesn't have most of his weapons. Uh, Don Terrio Drummond, Braylon Sanders, Jonathan Mingo, his top three receivers, all three have been kind of held out back and forth for various little, you know, minor injuries, um, nothing serious. But, uh, you know, he's, he doesn't have his top three receivers. He doesn't have his top two running backs. Um, and, and, you know, he's missing part of his offensive line. So you get excited and, and you're happy that, you, you know, you're getting some good production out of that defense but at the same time you got to go hey okay they're not we're not getting the you know the real the big guns uh you know coming against them so um you know you just you take it all with a grain of salt and you know but that's that's what all spring practice is about get the spring game coming up on saturday uh four o'clock central time they're on uh, i believe the sec alternate network so uh you can jump online i believe if you've got espn and and, and get it uh, online or on the sec alternate network that's been a bit of a mystery for me the last few weeks and trying to find these games on the sec alternate network uh, i don't know if you can clarify any of that for us at all jake yeah honestly i really don't know it's been a mystery for me too i think you, you might have to have an espn plus subscription you might have i, I don't know it's it's all up in the air but it, it'll be there somewhere and if, and if you don't get to see it live you're definitely gonna get to see replays and plenty of it on twitter absolutely absolutely so uh you know, based not just on these scrimmages, but everything that you're hearing coming out of a uh, spring practice, uh, what's what's happened over the last three to four weeks that uh, stands out to you or makes you think anything different about this football team? Well, you know, like we said, um, you know, coming from the offensive side of the ball, we're missing a lot of the the, the major weapons. Um, you know, the guys that we probably will see the most of this year, um, Jerry Neely, obviously, right now uh, playing baseball. Uh, he's going to be the starting running back again for the Rebels this year. Um, so, you know, you're, we're, you've got him out. Um, so, you, you know, you've had some younger guys. You've had Snoop Connor running the ball a lot, taking reps with the ones. Um, you've also had Kentrell Bullock running the ball a lot, somebody that hadn't carried it too much with the exception of the Outback Bowl last year. Um, and so, you know, it's just a lot of new young faces, which obviously it's it's frustrating to not have, you know, these – you know, the, the primary guys in there working and, and you know, building the chemistry. Uh, but at the same time, it's good because you get a look at the future and, and you get to kind of build some depth with some of these younger guys that haven't had as many chances yet. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the positive we've taken out of it. Um, you know, when it comes to the receivers, like I mentioned, we're missing our top three receivers through to, due to various injuries and, you know, just trying to trying to play it safe, I guess. Um but it's also good because we're getting, you know, like I said, a, a chance to build up some of these other guys. Um, Dennis Jackson is one of the guys who's had great reports coming out of spring camp so far. Uh, for, he was a former four star, um, you know, came in with with high hopes for Ole Miss, but just really hasn't panned out. He's kind of gotten lost in the mix, sort of, and, and hadn't really made the most of his opportunities um, over the last couple of years. But he's a guy that, that Lane Kiffin says they're very high on right now. Um, he's been he's been developing really good chemistry with Matt Corral. And, um, you know, they've kind of they, they've kind of 
put him more on the outside. Um, we're obviously the role we're trying to fill the biggest on the offensive side is uh, Elijah Moore in that slot. Um, but Dennis Jackson's a guy that they really like on the outside. Um, Quay Davis is a guy transfer uh, from Juco this past year. Um, he, he's built more like your outside receiver, but they've put him more in the slot. And apparently he looks very comfortable, uh, you know, catching those bubble screens, kind of being an extension of the run game, sort of. Um, and so those are, you know, two big things, because obviously the biggest question is, how do you replace Elijah Moore? How do you replace you know, 90 catches, 1500 yards and all those touchdowns. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tall task. Um, so it's been good to see some of these young guys been able to step in, uh, and, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully make an impact here in a couple of months. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. It's uh, from the offensive side of the ball. Like we said, we're dealing with kind of a shell of, of what we probably will see and what we did see last year. Um, but, you know, this Ole Miss offense for the last four or five years has been very high powered last year. It was the third best in the FBS. And so, um, you know, we're, we're excited. And, and and if we get to build depth along the way, we're all for it. Talking Ole Miss football, we got Jake Evans on the line from the Rebel Walk. So uh, check him out and the rest of the crew, their work uh, covering Ole Miss football and uh, baseball, basketball on down the line there in Oxford. Uh, you can uh, register at thevoiceofcollegefootball.com. Get yourself a free Ole Miss mask or your team of choice. We got 35 available. And even if you don't want a mask, uh, check out our New site there at voiceofcollegefootball.com. Um, put yourself in the running for a $25 gift card giveaway and a 20% uh, off your first purchase as well. Jake, I don't know if you had a chance to check out the ESPN FPI, the Football Power Index. They've got Ole Miss at number 22. They've got the Rebels with, uh, as they run it through, how strong they think each individual team is going to be and then compare it against the schedule. Then they spit out this record, which is, uh, let's see, basically seven and five, 6.9 wins, seven, five point one losses. So yeah, seven and five. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, you know, I, I think, I think Ole Miss is going to be one of those teams where, you know, they're always going to have that seven and five record based on the, uh, you know, based on the track record of the last couple of years. I think until they prove that they can win more than that, they're not going to get credit for being able to do it. Um, you know, and, and obviously when you got Alabama, which is an almost guaranteed loss for everybody every year, um, you know, there, there's a handful of teams that the Rebels have every single year that just, unless you, unless you've got to go in that year, it's probably going to be a loss. Um, you know, as Ole Miss fans, we like to play the what if game like everybody does. And, you know, we think we should go about 10 and two next year, but realistically, there's always a few games that seem to get away from the Rebels every year. Um, you know, I mean, th this year we were we played 57 of 60 minutes against Alabama, and if we'd have finished those last three, we might have been able to pull one out, you know, against Alabama. Um, so you, you can sit there and play the what if game all day long, but, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, we don't really give, uh, you know, too much to that. We don't really spend too much time thinking about that because when it comes down to it, like I said, we got, we got to prove that we can win more than seven games before somebody's going to give us credit for it. Yeah, they're obviously going to kick off these games and then all this doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, 22 seems pretty fair to me. The thing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you look at the rest of the division is this ESPN FBI has Mississippi State at number yeah. eight. Yeah. When has I, Mississippi State ever been number eight at anything? Well, in football. <laughs> I, I, I really I really don't understand it. I saw that a couple of weeks ago. I, I'd forgotten where Ole Miss was, but I, I did remember where Mississippi State was. Um, I, you know, it just – I don't know. It's, it's, it's See, the thing is, is as I, I kind of see them in the same situation as Ole Miss. Um, you know, I think that they're going to have to prove that they can, you know, be a be a you know plus five hundred team before that before somebody should give them credit for it. Um, obviously, like we said, you know the SEC is the gauntlet, and and you know it, it, you get credit for it to some extent for, for playing the hardest competition. But I, I really I I don't understand it. I, I really personally don't understand it. I don't know you know and and this is coming from an Ole Miss fan, obviously. So Mississippi State fans and other people might disagree, but I don't know what Mike Leach has shown so far that that gives you confidence that he could do that. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. But, um, you know, it's better to be sitting at number 22 and have a, a projected seven win season than be sitting up there at number three with maybe what, nine wins or something they're projecting for him. And, and, you know, you got a lot further, you know, you got a lot more room to fall there than Ole Miss does. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what I take of that. It, this is all just stuff to fill time in the off season and give people something to talk about. So, like I said, try not to try not to think too much into it. That's us at least. Jake, we know Matt Corral's got an arm. I guess we're going to find out uh, this weekend whether uh, his head coach has a has an arm. 
We will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Ole Miss right now in the middle of the baseball series with LSU. Um, lost game one last night, got game two tonight, uh, Friday night at 630. And then tomorrow before the Grove Bowl, noon, Lane Kiffin will be throwing out the first pitch. We were talking about it before. You know, we, we've seen him throw the football. He can throw the football. We got to hope he can throw the baseball because, man, that would be something if he just spiked one in the dirt in front of 12,000 people because you know it's going to hit Twitter one way or the other. And, you know, with, with, with the personality that he brings, you just you got to hope he can back it up there and, and, and fire one down the middle. My theory on that, when you look at the three major sports, is basketball's kind of a wild card. There are guys, there are plenty of dudes that I've ever, that that I've both seen and played with. They could play basketball and they couldn't throw a baseball worth a damn. Yeah. Uh, but if you can throw a football, you can throw a baseball. And if you can throw a baseball, you can throw a football. That, that, I, I have never seen uh, where that doesn't carry over from those two sports. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree. And I mean, you, you know, you look at it too. Some of the best players in the NFL at, at one point were great baseball players. A.J. Brown got drafted by the Padres out of high school. Russell Wilson played, I think, for the Rangers in their spring training for a couple of years. Tom Brady got drafted. I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where it kind of translates well enough. I mean, you might not be an outstanding baseball player, but you definitely can throw it. And so, you know, at, at that point, you just – you got you to block it all out. You got to block out all the noise, and you just got to try and focus on that mitt because, if, like I said, if he spikes it, it's it's going to be uh, – he's never going to live it down. Yeah, if he spikes it, I'm still going to believe that if you had him throw it 10 more times, he would be fine. He just, you know, just well, wasn't warmed up, ready to go. But, you know, yeah. you can't live that down regardless. You got you to gotta perform the, the one shot you get. Uh, that I, I think his uh, decision is going to be whether he's just going to cut loose and really, you know, put a little yeah. flame on it, really cut loose, or if he's just going to lob it and just play it safe. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and you know, I, I could see it going either way, but, you know, also there's a part of me that thinks that he might spike it for the attention. You know, Lane Kiffin, <laughs> he knows how to get his name out there. I mean, you saw, you know, last year he threw the clipboard 20 rows up into the stands. I'm not saying he meant to do it. I'm not saying he it was a publicity stunt by any means, but that guy knows how to how to how to get the eyes on him. And so, hey, if if you know a little lob 50 mile an hour pitch right down the middle, everybody's gonna give a little clap and say, go Rebs, and then we'll move on. If he spikes it in the dirt, he'll be all over Twitter for the next week or so. So I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him to 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 you know do something crazy just for the uh for the for the attention it would draw. The guy's a mastermind. You know, regardless of what anybody thinks about uh, George W. Bush as a president, uh, he made the most famous uh, yeah. opening pitch uh, throw during 9-11 after 9-11, of course, at Yankee Stadium. And he didn't even take that from the from the grass. He went up on the mound, took it yeah. from the rubber and just fired it in there for a strike. Yep. And uh, people remember that. Oh, yeah. He stepped up there and he just said he gave a little wave and just <laughs> just hummed that thing in there. He didn't even think about it. And that's what you got to do. You just you can't think about it. It's not right. Yeah. And, and the famous story from that is that Jeter said, oh, you, you got to you got to take this from the from the rubber. You can't throw from the, in front of the mound or they're going to boo you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he stepped up. He knew what he had to do and he got it done. So we just we just got to hope Kiffin does the same tomorrow. All right. Well, I'm going to be searching the net uh, at some point tomorrow night looking for the Ole Miss spring game to try to get some highlights, if not the whole thing. If I can't uh, find it on one of these multiple SEC networks I have. Uh, you would think based on my background, I would have a little bit more insight into it, but I don't. All right. Uh, good stuff. Old Miss uh, going at it for their spring game at four o'clock central time. It's the Grove Bowl. Jake, we always appreciate you setting us up for the, um, um, the, the personnel breakdown on the Rebels. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We, uh, we're excited for tomorrow. The Rebels are going to win, but the Rebels sadly are also going to lose. So we're just going to have to see which side, uh, which side gets the upper hand.